Did you know that 70% of the US population has inadequate vitamin D levels? This isn't just a number. It's a health crisis that we need to address right now. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in serotonin production, which affects our mood and mental well-being. Lack of vitamin D can lead to a higher risk of all-cause mortality, respiratory-related mortality, and even cancer-related mortality. Today, we are diving into an enlightening episode of the Uberman Lab podcast, hosted by Dr. Andrew Uberman, a professor at Stanford University, renowned for his research on brain function, behavior, and health. In this clip, Dr. Uberman and his guest delve into the science behind vitamin D, its role in the body, and why you should be concerned about your vitamin D levels. We will explore how vitamin D affects everything from your mood to your immune system. We will also look at why people with darker skin may need more vitamin D and why age matters in vitamin D conversion. I mean, I think the most obvious would be vitamin D, which is actually, as you know, a steroid hormone mm -hmm. that we produce when we're in the sun. Depending on the time of year, um, we can make it in our skin. And depending on how much melanin we have in our skin or whether or not we're wearing sunscreen or how old we are, it's it's a very, it, there's a sliding scale on how efficient that process is. And it's sort of, as I understand, there's an inverse relationship where the darker, the more darker, your, the darker your skin is naturally, the more vitamin D you need to consume. Is that right? Well, the darker your skin is, um, the harder it is. So there was a study out of the University of Chicago, this was several years ago, where they looked at um, African Americans and um, compared African Americans to um, Caucasians with light skin, fair skin, and how how well they could make vitamin D from sun exposure and, um, and, and how long they had to be in the sun to make X amount, right? And it turns out that um, African Americans with darker darker pigmentation, which protects them from the burning rays of the sun, it's a natural sunscreen, uh, had to stay in the sun like six times as long as someone with uh, no, none of that natural sunscreen. So um, I think the 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 take home there is, um, you know, a lot of people with a darker skin living in sub-Saharan Africa, or people living in India with darker skin, or in the Philippines, you know, these equatorial regions where there's Uh, there you tend to see darker skin because it's protection from sure. the burning rays of an sun. adaptation they, yeah. they are in the sun more right yeah and they're getting more um, uh, vitamin d but um people that maybe move to the united states to like minnesota or in a place where uh you know uvb radiation isn't you know getting to the atmosphere 12 months out of the year it's only getting there four months for example um or even living in our modern day society where people just don't go outside anymore i mean we're inside we're at our laptops in school we're at work we're in our cubicle whatever Supplementation does play a major role, not only for people with, um, you know, darker skin that, that aren't outside all the time, but for everyone. 70% of the U.S. population has inadequate vitamin D levels, 70 of the whole Amazing. U U.S. So this is everyone. Um, and, and so I think that insufficient levels defined as less than 30 nanograms per milliliter, um, and, and that's sort of defined by the, the Endocrine Society Uh, looking, looking, looking at a lot of different aggregate studies and all-cause mortality, for example, um, there's been a, a lot of different meta-analyses of all-cause mortality studies where vitamin D levels are, are really seem to be ideal between 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. And so um, in order to get to that level, if you are not outside all the time, live in Southern California where you're always outside without sunscreen on, I always wear sunscreen because I'm trying to protect my skin from so many wrinkles and stuff, right? But also skin cancer is, you know, somewhat of an issue as well. So um, so, so basically the point is that vitamin D is a steroid hormone, meaning it actually binds to a receptor and um, another receptor dimerizes with it, vitamin, the, the retinoid receptor. And that complex goes into the nucleus of a cell where your DNA is. And it rec recognizes little sequences of DNA called vitamin D response elements. They're called VDREs. There are specific sequences of DNA that this complex vitamin D bound to the vitamin D receptor goes inside and recognizes and turns on a whole host of genes, turns off a whole host of genes. I mean, this is, this is important stuff. Like imagine 70% of the population having insufficient testosterone. 
Okay, so first of all, it's it's regulating more than five percent of the protein encoded human genome. More than, and this was, you know, I say more than because when I was looking at this data really in depth back in you know, starting in you know 2012 to 2014. Um, it was that, and then it's now grown. But um, one of the important things that you'll find interesting that I published on back in 2014 was that uh, I'd gone through this this big published database where someone had you know published all these genes they found BDREs in, and um, basically I found that tryptophan hydroxylase one and tryptophan hydroxylase two was on there. And so then I started looking at the sequence, and I was doing some in silico work. And it turns out that um, the VDREs in tryptophan hydroxylase 2, so for people listening, tryptophan hydroxylase is an enzyme that converts tryptophan into serotonin. So tryptophan is what we, uh, an amino acid that we get from our food. Um, you convert serotonin, you convert tryptophan into serotonin into the gut, in the gut, but you also do it in the brain. However, serotonin does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So Tryptophan has to get into your brain, and then you have to convert it to serotonin in your brain. Well, the enzyme that does that in your brain is called tryptophan hydroxylase 2, and it's activated by vitamin D. Um, the one in the gut is actually tryptophan hydroxylase 1. Um, some of my, my published work hypothesize that it might actually be repressed by vitamin D because it has a sequence. The sequence itself, uh, this 12 nucleotide sequence, it can determine... In, to some degree, whether it's going to be activated or turned off. And so, like, I was able to kind of look at that and think, oh, maybe this and that. And so since then, there have been some groups that have confirmed more with in vivo and or in vitro studies because mine was all in silico and all that stuff. But um, anyways, so serotonin, uh, a really important one. But most people, I mean, this is regulating our immune, our immune cell, immune system. It's regulating uh, our blood pressure, you know, all that that's water retention, you know, I mean, bone, of course, homeostasis, 5%, more than 5%. I mean, I can't tell you, like, so much. Measuring your vitamin D levels before and after supplementation is the only way you're going to figure that out, right? Um, very important. If you don't measure it, like, you don't know. Like, you know, you, you can't know what you don't measure. So um, for, for the most part, taking 1,000 IUs of vitamin D will raise blood levels by around 5 nanograms per milliliter. So let's say you're deficient, you're 20 nanograms per milliliter, and you want to get to 40. You're going to need at least 4,000 IUs if you are normal, don't have any of these SNPs that change your metabolism of vitamin D, right? Does it matter uh, when you take it relative to sun exposure, time of day, with or without food? I've seen some not so great preliminary evidence suggesting maybe time of day is important. I don't think it really, like I can't seem to, to, you know, to find anything that really suggests because like the, for it to actually be converted into the hormone, I mean, it's stored. The fat, slow acting, the like, steroid hormones are slow acting. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a media thing. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, maybe we'll get some new data that's like otherwise, okay. but I just don't. Great. Yeah. I, Make, it's simplified. If you found this information valuable, Make sure to subscribe to the Huberman Lab podcast for more insightful discussions on health and well-being. Don't be a part of the 70% with inadequate vitamin D levels. Get tested, get some sun, and take control of your health. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.